Hello, scholars. Good evening. How's everybody today? Is everybody good? I'm going to do a video and then we're going to do some practical work. Can everybody hear me? Can you type in the chat box that you could all hear me? Just say, I can hear you. I can hear you. Oh, beautiful. Okay. I can hear you. Good. Do you know where the chat box is though? I yeah. Can... Okay, good. All right, class, let's let's watch this video and then we're going to dive right into a problem on page 139 of your book. It's called White Diamond Flower Company. Not flower that you pick in the garden, but flower that you make a cake. So I'm going to type it in the box. I want you to turn to that because we're going to work on that. Tonight we're going to do some practical work instead of theoretical because this problem is very similar to the PQ you were assigned. Okay, very good. So here goes the video, it's only a minute. Determining the cost of a product is called product cost. Companies need product cost information in order to determine the profitability of each product line. Product cost includes three elements, direct material, direct labor, and factory overhead. Direct materials and direct labor are direct costs that can be put into the product. Factory overhead is indirectly related to products and therefore is allocated to products using a factory overhead allocation rate. Managers are concerned about the method of allocating factory overhead because it affects the accuracy of product costs. Factory overhead allocation rates are developed using different approaches. One approach allocates overhead to products using a single factory overhead rate for the entire plant. Another method allocates factory overhead using a different rate for each department. A third allocation approach develops rates based upon activities or processes. So notice um, activity-based costing, the purple one, that's going to be in chapter four. And these two here, single plant-wide rate method and multiple production method, that's in chapter four. Let me see. Excuse me. No, this is chapter three. Activity-based costing is chapter four. This is a very good overview. Do you, did anybody see this in their chapter? Is there a pictorial of this in the chapter? The allocation method, here's the factory overhead. You select with method, so you have a choice, just like you have a choice on a menu. And then these are the different methods, depending on what kind of company you have. But each one of them still has direct materials, direct labor, factory overhead, all the same. This is all the same common denominator. The method is different, but basically we get to the same bottom line. What's the product cost? How do we allocate this factory overhead? All right. Managers consider the choice of an allocation method important because it affects the product cost. All right, class, so we're gonna dive right into the white diamond. So I'm gonna do a new share. Uh, let's see, I just wanna make sure I have the right template. Does everybody see white diamond flower company? Do you all see that? Yes. Oh, good, good, okay. So let's just look at the information before we um, tackle the problem. Does everybody have their textbook? Yes, can you make it a little larger? Okay, sure. But let's just before I do that, let's just look at the let's just look at the um the you know the information. So let me let me I can make it larger. I can't make it too large, otherwise I don't think it's gonna be on the screen. You actually okay. So here's on this page. Um, white diamond flower. So I would make a note of some of this information, unless you have your book, then you don't have to. So on the, on the left hand side, can everyone read this? Um, let me do another share, make sure you're looking at the same thing as I am. So this is the problem we're dealing with right now. The equivalent units and related costs and the cost of production report. Notice that when you look in your textbook, they give you a hint. 
they tell you that the transfer to packaging department is 40,183. So let me just type that. I would write that down in my notes. So transferred to packaging department, 40,183. That's a gift from the textbook people. They're giving you a piece of the information. So let's go back. Let's go back to our worksheet, white diamond, if I could find it. And I'm going to, you know, do a new share. I think this is white diamond. All right, so let me do a new share. Ms. Vera, can you yeah. please let the other people join? Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Okay. Okay, so th thank you for that. You're welcome. Very good, thanks for reminding me. So admit all. All right, so everybody's in now, thanks a lot. So, okay, for those of you who just entered, turn to page 139 in your textbook. It's 1, 534, so I recommend you get to, get to this meeting five minutes before it starts. Otherwise, I might not see you and let you in. One of the students reminded me, which is, which is good. So notice, one page, this is what the template looks. This is a template that Cengage prepared. Cengage templates, they're, they're basically Excel, but they're not 100% Excel. So my advice to you is be very careful when you put a formula. If you see the formula hasn't trans, uh, turned into a number, then type the number in, otherwise your whole template's gonna be wrong. So did everybody write down that number I told you to write down? 40,183. Does everybody realize when you do when you do caps in the chat box that means you're shouting at me? So please, no caps in the chat box. Capital. Does everybody know that that capital letters in a text or a chat means you're shouting? Does everybody know that? Okay. So just keep that in mind. All right. So now, does everyone remember the forty thousand one eighty three? Now take a look at this sheet and tell me where do you think that number goes? It said in my in the um, chat box, I put, let's see, it might have moved because now people are typing. Okay, transfer to packaging department. See if you can find on this production, cost of production report. See if you can find transferred to packaging department. Does anybody see that? Take a look at all these lines. Anybody see it? Is it up here? One, two, three, four, five. Is it in the fifth section? Is it's it in five? two. It's in two. Where in two? It's the uh, third one down right there on your mouse. Okay. So let's see. Where does it go? Does it? Go? What is it considered? It's transfer to packaging. Should I put it? Well, it's dollars. So should I put it here? You think? Let's try. So forty thousand one eighty three. Let me just. I'm trying to show you how to, how to use these sheets. They're tricky. So 40,000, oh wait, I gotta do enable editing, forgive me. Okay. So 40, okay, hang on. 4183, let's see, I put a five. So make sure you check your numbers. So 4183. Hold on a minute, 4183. So notice there's a red star here. So it didn't like it there. Let, where's another place it possibly could go? Do you see anything here that says transferred to packaging department in July? Anything down in this section? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. The third line up? Yes. Yeah. Okay, let's try putting it here. 40,183. It likes that line. Very good. So it goes there. So you have to kind of experiment with the send gauge. If it gives you a red asterisk, that was a good, good educated guess, uh, whoever gave that to me, but it didn't work. So we're taking that out. If you get a red star, then something's wrong. So there's the gift they gave us. Let me see if I can highlight this. I don't think so. All right. So we have the given piece. Let's go back. And let's go look at the rest of the information. 
All right, so does everyone see the information? White Diamond Flower Company manufactures flour by a series of three processes. Beginning with wheat grain being introduced in the milling department, and then there's a sifting department, and there's a packaging department. So that's why they call it the process cost systems, because these are different processes milling, sifting, and packaging, okay? So after it's all done, it emerges as a packaged refined flour. And when you go into Publix, you'll see gold metal flour or whatever flour, there's different varieties. That's the finished product. So what do they tell us? They tell us that, let's look down here for a minute. I'm going to highlight this. Okay, let me see if I can highlight it. So they, in yellow, during July, they tell us that they received, that the 15,500 units were completed and work in process sifting department on July 31, there was ending uh, units of 1,100 four fifths complete. So it wasn't a hundred percent complete, it was partially complete. So all this information uh, matters. So let's see. So they tell us that they started out with 900 units. That's the beginning inventory, 900 units up here, they tell us. See July 1? July 1 is synonymous with beginning. So here's 900 units, 900 units. So let's go back to a sheet and see where we could put the 900 units. So let's do a new share. So here's the inventory beginning units right here. So we're gonna put 900 and it likes that number. There's no asterisk. If I put a thousand, notice the red asterisk. So we begin with 900 units, not dollars, this is units. What did we receive from the milling department. So let's go back and see what we got from the milling department. Thirty-three thousand seven hundred and fifty-five. That's a good guess, and that does go somewhere. That's a that's a that's a no, that's a that's a uh, dollar amount. Oh, let's, so it would be fifty. Yeah. But let's 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 go put that thirty-three. Now that you brought it up, thirty-three. 755 is total cost. We can see it, Mr. Pell. Oh, you can see it, but I want to write it in the chat box just so you, you see it, what I'm working on. So let's go back. I'm glad you see it. Good. So let's go back and uh, let's go find where that goes. I got to do a new share. It's just it's a pain, but we got to we got to work through this. Does everyone see the white fl diamond flower? Do you see that now? Yes. Okay, good, thank you. So now let's see. Here's the total cost for July in the sifting department. That What was the number you gave me? Um, was it Myra? Who gave me the 33,755? Flavia, was that you? Yeah, that's me. Oh, no, I'm glad. Okay, so we're going to put your number right here. That's a good number, 33,755. So there's where the number goes. This is dollars. Up here is units. You got to be careful. This is units, but down here is dollars. You got to be careful what you're doing. We got units and dollars. It can be very confusing. So these are the total costs for July. So and the total equivalent units, does anybody remember what that number is? These are not dollars, these are units. Let's so is it 15,700? Yeah, good. So these are units. Now guess what? This is a division sign right here. So in other words, when you're doing this send gauge sheet, you don't have to start at the top and work your way to the bottom. You can jump around. The only thing that will stop you is if you get a red asterisk, then you gotta figure out what happened. So now this is a division sign. So we're going to take equal 33,755 
divided is a slash 15,700. Now, 215, it likes that number, $2.15. That's the cost per equivalent unit. Now, look, who's, look what happens if I put the formula in wrong. 33,755 divided by 15,700. Look what happens. First of all, there's no number. And there's, there's a red asterisk. Somebody handed in a template like this. And, 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 and what happens is it takes points off and you don't get a good grade up here. So I just want to make you aware of how these Cengage templates, they're temperamental. So what's missing? The equal sign. Now, if you don't want to do that, you can take your calculator that's on your desk. You can calculate 33,755 divided by 15,700, get the answer. And what can you do? You can type in $2.15. So you have a choice. Either calculate it on your cal calculator at home and put the answer or put a formula, but make sure you put the correct formula. So now we have, uh, let's go back. Now there's 15,700 units. Those were received from the milling department. So they, they're going to go up here as well. And now what do we do? It says total units. Basically, we have to just add these two together. Sometimes they give us a break. Okay, so that's, that's we finished this here. Now they want to know units to be assigned a cost. Units to be assigned a cost. So we have beginning inventory. So these units, they told us, were... Let's go back to our sheet and take a look. Let me do a new share. And let me make sure there's nobody in the waiting room. I don't think so. I think everybody's here. I'm glad. So notice they tell us that they're, um, let's see, units to be assigned a cost. And they're 60% complete. So how did they get 60%? Because they used three-fifths. Does anybody know how to convert three-fifths into a percentage? Uh, you divide three by five. Yeah, what did, thank you, Dylan. And what did you get? I think it's like 60%. Yeah, exactly. So let me just write it over here so, you, so we can see. So three divided by five, that's a fraction, equals 60%. And then we have, let's see what else we have. Okay, so four fifths complete, how much would that equal? 80%. 80% you said? Good. All right, so let's go back to our sheet and let's add these in now that we know these percentages. Because this over here is ending inventory 80% and this is beginning 60%. So let's go back. Let's go find our worksheet. Let's do a new share. So here is where we put the percentage. So we have, see what it tells us. They even tell us this percentage may be entered as a fraction with an equal sign such as this. So we could put equal three slash five, and guess what? Or we could just put, notice if you hover a certain way, it tells you what to do. Or here, we're just gonna put the 80%. I typed in the 80, so you have a choice, the formula or just type in the percentage. So here, the beginning is right here. We're gonna put the same num number of units, 900. And then we don't add any direct materials because it has all the materials. It's just not finished. Uh, we're not finished converting it. So we don't, we don't need to add material, but the conversion we're going to do equal plus 60% times the 900. Let's see if that works. No, it didn't like that one. Okay. So let's stop. Let's start again. I'll be sending you a message. Somebody sending me a message? 
I will. Oh, yeah. admitted? Okay, to admit. Okay, thank you very, very much. Thank you. Good job. What do you see when you see this message? I wish I would get a message as well. Okay, so now, if it's 60% complete, scholars, how much more do we have to complete it? What's 60% from 100%? 40%. Yeah, exactly. So make sure you put a zero here. So here, we have to do equal 40% times 900 units. So it likes the 360. So that's what we have to convert. It's completed by 60%. We have 40% times this to complete. This is what how much we have to complete, 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 complete. So what was started? All right, let's see. So we know, <clears throat> let me see, we know here that the, what was transferred to the packaging department, they told us was 15,500. They told us that that was transferred. Let's go back and look at that so we could see it with our eyes. They said during July, 15,500 units of flour were completed. Let's go back again to our, our Excel sheet. Not, I'll, let me just find it. I got a couple Excel sheets here. So new share. All right. So if we know that the 15,500 was transferred in July and we know we began with 900, what, what, what is this unknown? What is that? What is what? Equal, what? What plus nine hundred equals fifteen five hundred? This is like an algebra question. Does anybody know? I'm looking in the chat box in case someone's typing. Fourteen thousand six hundred. Say, could you type it in the chat box? Because all I I heard like a bunch of voices. Yes, yes, that's right. So I'm going to type in 14,600. Very good. So notice that that, that answer is correct. So now we, we didn't do anything with these. We started and completed them in July. So as far as materials, all 14,600 have to be worked on as far as materials. And all 14,600 need converting. And now all we do is add again. So we basically equal plus this plus this. And then here, equal plus this plus this. Enter formula of percent complete times whole units. Okay, so they give you some pointers. Now the inventory in process, July 31, does anybody remember how much that was? I'm going to tell you. It was 1,100 on the sheet. So we're going to put 1,100. And as far as materials go, we put in, we have to put in the materials. And we have Let's see. And here we times this by 80%. Enter a formula of percent complete. So we have equal plus this times this. Okay, so it's 880. So here we times it times the complete percentage. Here we times it by the incomplete percentage. It's a little confusing. It's a little confusing. So this was 80% and this was 40%. This is beginning inventory, this is ending. Now we just add this one plus this one. 15,500 plus 1,100. And that's the whole units. We need this section here in order to do this section. That's why we're doing the top. 
So here we're going to add, let me try doing a copy. And let, let me see if I can paste it. Let's see if it, it works. Yeah, it worked. And paste. So here's all the equivalent units, whole units. So now we go into what we have here. All right. So let's see. 16, 8, 40. Total costs in July. So let's go back to our sheet and see what the conversion costs are. Let's go back and take a look. Okay. New share. So let me see. Seven. This is okay. So the conversion cost, does anybody remember what conversion costs equal? I'm going to type it in the box. There's a definition. This is something that you should put in your notes as well. Conversion costs equal direct labor plus factory overhead. So uh, you might want to change it might want to change what you have hold on um i'm going to oh. type it in for you because you have it to the point where it's to me oh it's to me okay oh i got you i got you okay thank you harrison so everyone thank you harrison so i'm just going to cut this oh and by the way the pq4 template is not working for me oh the pq4 template yep Okay. It says that it's locked. All right. I, I, let me make a note of that so I can go check that out. PQ4 template locked. I did. Why? It changed on me again. What? All right. Hang on. Let me try again, everyone. All right. So conversion costs. Uh, I think I got it this time, Harrison. Conversion costs equal. Thank you for letting me know. Direct labor plus factory overhead. So that's conversion costs. So based on what you're looking at, I'm going to highlight those two numbers. And you're going to have, those are the two numbers you're going to need to add together. I'm going to highlight them in like another color. So they're in turquoise. Does everybody see the highlight in turquoise? Yeah. Okay. Those are the conversion costs. So please add those numbers together and type in the chat box what you what you got when you added the two numbers together. I want I want to see you doing the work because I know this work already. I've been through this nightmare. I've been in your seat. So type in, in the chat box what these two numbers equal when you add them together. 4420 and 2708. Very good. Very good. Anybody else? Harrison, Dylan, Clay, Myra, Olivia, Angela. I, I know there's like 15 people. Okay, good, 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 good. So let's go back. Great job. Great job, everybody. So let's go back and put those numbers in. So I'm going to do a new share and come back to the sheet. So we're going to put 7128 in this total cost conversion. And then the total equivalent units we're going to get. Now this is conversion, right? Does everybody see how it says conversion? Does everybody see that? What does this say, Scholar? Conversion. Yeah. So guess what? I'm going to use this number, the one that I, the one I computed. I'm going to put that right down here, right? I'm going to put this number here. Unfortunately, it's not lined up. It should be, wish they had moved it over, but they didn't. So this number goes here. And notice this number came from here. Do you see how we calculated this and now we're utilizing it? Does everyone see that? Yep. Good job. You so can now, just e press equal and it does it yeah, for you. Exactly. 7128 divided by that. Because I know you guys can do this template. It's just, it looks scary when you first look at it. And I don't blame you for getting nervous. All right, so let me just blow it up a little so you could just see it. So take your notes while, I'm, while I have it open, and then I'm going to go on to the next section. Because when you go to do this PQ3, 
this is basically what it was. Same thing, same template, different company. So here's, here's the most important piece. This is what we're going to allocate in direct materials. And this is what we're going to allocate in conversion costs based on the units, the whole units and the so-called equivalent units. So you have, you have dolls that have all their arms and legs and hair and dress and shoes. Then you've got dolls sitting on the workbench. One has, is missing an arm. One doesn't have its shoes. Those are not finished yet. But if you take all those unfinished do dolls and put them together, how many finished dolls do they make? Well, this is what they make based on what we put them together. I know we're talking about flour, but I'm trying to make you understand what this business of equivalent units means. If you have half a fish and then you have another half a fish, if you put that those two fishes together, you actually have one fish, agreed? So that's what equivalent units is. It's taking piece stuff that's not quite done yet, but putting it together and saying, well, I know it's not done yet, but when I put them all together, I really have this many equivalent whole units. So now we go to the inventory. Uh, let's see, the inventory in process. So let's go back and see our sheet and see what our sheet says. Let me bring it back up again. All right, so now um, they want us to tell, tell us what the inventory at the beginning. Now, this is the inventory in the beginning, the cost in dollars. So I'm going to highlight this and I'll say green. So now add those two numbers together and tell me what you get as far as cost assigned to the beginning uh, production amount or work in process. So I'm going to put it in. I figured out how to do PQ4. Oh, Harrison, good job. Oh, excellent. Uh, excellent, Dylan. You're right. 2061. Good job. So a lot of times I ask you to type it in the chat box because this way when I go back to the, to the uh, what do you call the template, I know what the number is. Otherwise, I'll forget. So here, we're back at the template and we're going to put the uh, Dylan's number 2061. Does it like it? Yes. Enter the total debit entries made to the work and process sifting department in July. And that was the two numbers. What were the numbers again, Dylan? One eight what? I forgot. Were they one eight three five? I don't remember. I don't have it up. No, know. don't you worry. Don't you worry. I, okay, so that's okay. So now we have to do the costs incurred in July. So let's go back and find out the costs incurred in July. So let's do the new share again. Uh, let's see. What happens when we add all three of these numbers together? Actually, you know what? Uh, let me see. Can someone be kind enough to add these three numbers together for me and tell me what you get? I just want to make sure. You should get 40,883. Yeah, good. So let's go back. Let's go back to our sheet. All right. So does everybody see... Uh, what I'm typing, I want to make sure I got the right sheet up. Did everyone see that I typed in 40883? Yes? Okay, good. So guess what? It says total cost in July. If I add these two numbers across, guess what I would get? I would get 40883. Then we have to add these two numbers, total cost for the sifting department. It's going to be equal plus this plus this. All right, we're moving right along. We're almost at the bottom. So now they want to know the in, in, inventory. Let's see. So let me just make sure I'm looking at this correctly. 
inventory and process July 1. To complete inventory in July, July 1. So as far as, uh, okay, July 1, just trying to see, 162. So here, cost allocated is the same as this. So we're just going to take that same number and put it here. And then to complete inventory in July 1. So let's just go back up here and see if the answer is up there. I just want to see. Okay. Dollars. 162. All right. This is going to be zero. Because material, it had all the material. We didn't have to add that. Um, 31.90. Started and completed. To complete inventory. And, all right. Equivalent units in process as of July 1 times the conversion cost per equivalent unit. Okay. So just bear with me. I just want to figure out something. 162 divided by 2. Uh, 0.45, 360. Okay. All right. So up here for July 1, we have 360 units. Okay. And that's what we're going to use to, to do down here. So here it's going to be equal plus 360 times conversion is 45 cents times 45 cents. So that's 162. Then we're going to add these two across and we get 162. This is cost of completed work. We're going to just add these two together. If you did this report every day for a week, you would be an expert by the end of the week. And then here, started and completed in July. Let's go back up here. Okay, let's see. Started and completed in July. Um, 6570. Started and completed in July. So this is started and completed in July. It says 14,600. So let's try that. Let's see if this works. We'll go down. We'll go down here. Started and complete in July. We're going to take equal 14,600 times this 215 because in July they had no material, no conversion cost. We have to do everything for whatever was done in July. Here we're going to take equal plus. Let's go back up here. 14,600. And we're going to times that by the conversion amount of 45 cents. And we get 6570. So now we add these two across. What does 2223? Plus thirty-seven nine nine sixty equal. It equals the exact number down there. Good. Yes. Yes, it, you are correct. It equals the forty-one eighty-three. Remember, they gave us that number. That was a gift. So then we're on the right track. So now here, the end the inventory. We're going to see what the inventory at, at the at the end of the month is. So we have. 1100, 1100 uh, whole units. Okay, so we put a let, it should be a equal 1100 times. What am I going to times it by? Am I going to times it by 215 or 45 cents? Mm -hmm. 
This is under direct, this is direct material. What do you yeah, yeah, 215. Let's try it. Listen, we try it. If it doesn't work, then we'll do the 45. Good job. And here, we're going to take um, the process, let's see. I think it's probably 880. So we're going to take this. Let me just go down here. This is going to be 880, not the 1100, because this is inventory at, at July 31. And we go down here, times 45 cents, because that's the conversion. So it, it's good. All they right? add them up. Yeah, exactly. So now we add them up. Equal plus 23.65 plus 3.96. And finally, we add these two up. Equal plus 40183 plus 2761. So the total costs assigned by the sifting department, the answer is 42,944. And we look and see the top. Guess what? We only got a 75%. Why? Because we still have to do some journal entries. So now this, they ask us to do a journal entry and we want to put it, we want to transfer the work to work in process sifting department. And that's going to be this number here. Oops, cancel. All right, let me just come down here. I think, oh, look, there's a drop down. Look at that, there's a drop down. So it's work in process sifting department. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Let's see what happens if we pick the wrong department. Let's see what happens. So this it's is, gonna be a red star. It has a red star. So guess what? Just keep trying till you get the right department. It doesn't like that one. It wants the sifting department. And then we put the 33755 and here, we're taking it out of the milling department. Because the first thing is when you make this grain, first you have to mill it. You have to ground it down by machine. Then it moves to the next step, the sifting. So when you take it out of milling, you put it into the sifting bucket. And debits have to equal credit. So guess what? This is going to be the same number. Finally, yeah, it's a process. Move. so now next, what happens after we sift it? We want to package it. So we want to move it to the packaging department. And then we want to take it out of the sifting department. Is it sifting department? Yes. Here we put it in the sifting. Now we're taking it out of sifting and putting it in packaging because it's now it's moving along the, the process. And that number is going to be transferred to packaging. It tells us right here. 4183. You just need to read. Well, not always. It's not always that easy. And then we do the same number here. And let's look at the top of our grade. Notice our grade is now 89. We still have some more to do. So they tell us the direct materials from the current period we found out because we computed it are 215 and 45 cents. So we go down here, 215 and conversion 45 cents and conversion costs equal factory overhead plus direct labor, direct material 215. But let's take a look at what was the beginning inventory. Let's go back to our informational sheet and see what they say. Let's do a new share. So what did they tell us? Let's see. Hopefully they did tell us the answer. I'm trying to look and see if I can see it. Maybe, maybe I didn't type. Oh, here. They tell us that last time it was, no, they don't, I don't think I see it. Maybe I left it off when I typed it. 205, oh, 205 and 215, 40 cents. All right, so let's go back. Let's go back to what we were looking at. So 
So here, here, here's what it was last time. It was two oh five, and it was forty cents. It was, it was. They told us, but it was kind of you kind of had to dig for it, like looking for an Easter egg. Wasn't that, wasn't that obvious? You had to kind of search. So they want to know, did the price of the direct materials per unit increase or decrease? Well, if it's two fifteen now, and it was two oh five, then it increased by ten cents. If it was 45 cents now, but it used to be 40 cents, then it also increased five by five cents. Now that might sound like a little bit to you, but in the scheme of things, 15 cents could mean a great deal. Yeah, it, could mean, it, could. it could mean somebody losing their job for 15 cents per unit. So let's see our grade now. Let's see our grade. So our grade is 100%. So let me blow it up a little so you could see this bottom half that we did. Let me see if I could blow it up a little bit more. So take a good look, make some notes. I can't blow it up too much, then it, then it's, then I kind of lose it. Make, make your notes because when you, if some of you haven't done the PQ3, this might help you. In other words, this number came from here, and this number came from here, and this number, this number was given to us, and this number also was given to us in the uh, information part. And basically, we divided to get the per unit amount. And here's the journal entries. Now, each one of these accounts, they're all inventory, they're all assets. But in a manufacturing, we're moving it along the process. We have it in the work and process sifting department, then it goes to the milling, then it goes to the packaging. So we make journal entries to show where the product is, at what point it's at. Take it out of one bucket, put it into the, another bucket. And then the managers want to compare and see, was it an increase? Was it a decrease? All right, does anybody have any questions on this very complicated? This is a very complicated problem. Does anybody have any questions upon it? Do you think you pretty much, do you think you have a better understanding of it now that we kind of went step by step? I hope. Oh, good, good class. He's saying yes. Good. So, okay. I don't, I, I want to go on to do an exercise. Now, a problem is very difficult. So I did the hard part first because I figured, let me do an easy one when you've been kind of doing a hard one first. So this, this might seem easy now that you've went through a hard one. So this is exercise 4-4, four, four. and I'm going to show you what the problem says, and we're going to put this one together. Now, this is what they call ABC costing. This is from Chapter 4. ABC costing is activity-based costing. So let's just take a look at the sheet, and then I'm going to work through with you. I'm going to do most of it, only because I don't want to torture you a second time through another problem. So let, let me just... Let's just look at this. Take Good some thing notes. I brought up that uh, template problem. Can you see? Can you see um, activity-based costing? The verbiage. Uh, example four four. Yeah, exercise. It's an exercise. Oh yeah, exercise okay. four four. Yeah, I have it right here right now. So this, if you have your book open, this is like the piece we might need, and they tell us the budgeted factory overhead rate is one hundred sixty-three thousand seven hundred and fifty. Now, budgeted means that we estimated it. That's not the actual number. It's an estimate. So that's important to understand when they use the word budget, it's estimated versus actual. So they want us to determine the factory overhead rate. They want us to determine the overhead and direct labor costs per unit for each product. 
So they have pistons and valves and cams, whatever that is, sounds like a car. Use the information to construct a budgeted gross profit. Oh, I think I know how to determine that. Good. So now look, they give us a piece of information in red. They tell us the pistons gross profit is 47,500. So let's go look at the worksheet. Let's go look at the worksheet. So let me do a new share and let's see, I think it's this one. All right, does everybody see pistons, valves and cams in the blue uh, 10 gauge template? Does everybody see that? So how many, how many pistons do we have? Does anybody have the book open? Harrison, do you know how many pistons, how many we have? Based uh, on pistons, 5,000 yeah, units. Good. Very good. So let me, can everyone see the worksheet or is it too small? Is that better? So 5,000. How many valves? Twelve thousand five hundred. Yes, 12,500. And how many cams? 1500. Good. Excellent. So it, it liked those numbers. It didn't give us a red asterisk. So then it tells us, um, it gave us the information and they want the, the direct labor hours per unit for the pistons is 50 cents per labor hour and 30 cents for the valves and 20 cents for the cams. So basically what you have to do now is times it out to get the total labor hours. So equal plus 5,000 of these pistons times half an hour. You know, course, that's gonna be half of that. Yep, 2,500. And then we're gonna, let me see if I can copy and paste. Well, I, I, wanna, I wanna just show you. So equal plus 12,500 times 0.30. So now 37.50 and then equal plus 1,500. That can be 300. Yeah, by 20. Yep, and now we add them up. Equal plus 2,500 plus 3,750 plus 300. So there we go. So the total estimated direct labor hours are 6,550. And the budgeted factory overhead divided by the plant-wide allocation base is how we come up with the amount per direct labor hour. So the back, the back, the budgeted factory overhead, what was that number? It was 163,000. Does anybody remember the rest of it? 750. Yeah, good. And divided by the allocation base, which is what we just computed, what we just computed right here. So we're going to take this number that we just figured out and put it there. And now we're going to times it out, or excuse me, we're going to divide it. See this line here? That's division. Yep, that's so, division. So equal 163,750 divided by 6550. So we get $25 per direct labor, labor. hour. Does everybody know that DLH stands for direct labor hour? Yep. Good job. All right. So now, here we go, we keep going. So we know the direct labor hours, we're just gonna put those in, it's the same that was up here, 0 0.50, 0 0.30. Let's make believe I make a mistake. There's that red star, okay, I see a red star, it's 0.20. So let's look at the grade, the grade is getting bigger, we got 33%. The plant-wide rate, the factory overhead rate is going to be $25, which we just figured out, times this number here. It's going to, this plant-wide rate is going to be the $25 times, times the this, direct labor hours. hours yep. per so unit. equal plus this number that we just computed times this number here. Uh-oh, it didn't like it. Okay, wait a minute. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. 
the plant like oh okay maybe it's they want the 25 there i'm sorry yeah. okay that's my fault they want the 25 let's see enter a formula so it's going to be equal plus this times, times this there you go and then it's got some sort of note here enter as a formula direct labor hours times the plant-wide rate okay then over here we have direct uh, estimated direct labor rate. Hmm. Estimated direct labor rate. Oh yeah, yeah. All right. Let's see. Enter as a formula. Okay, the rate. I think it's thirty dollars. Okay. Estimated. That was what they estimated. Uh, and it probably was in the problem. Does anybody see that it says that in the problem? Oh, yep. Uh, the estimated direct labor is 30 per $30. direct labor hour. Okay. Very good. Very good. I thought so. I don't want to take us back and forth again and get dizzy after a while. So I'm just timesing these out because might as well do what I know. I know that all I have to do is just multiply these three out. And then I know that this is 30 all the way down. So guess what? Over here, um, let's see what happens here. The cost, direct labor cost per unit. All right, enter as a formula of direct labor hours per unit times direct, direct labor cost per unit. Okay, so the answer is 15. How did they get this answer? Does anybody want to venture a guess? What did they do? They multiplied the estimated direct labor rate by the direct labor hours per unit. Very good. Excellent. Good, good job. Excellent. So it's this 50 cents. Thank you. Good job. Who was that, Myra? Yes, ma'am. Was it Myra? Or yes, ma'am. Uh, good job, not Myra. Good job. Equal plus 30, the point 30 times 30. So it's nine dollars. And then the direct labor hours times 30. All right, so here we have all of this put together now. Let's see what our grade is now. 57. Okay, we still got more to go. So now they want us to put together this product line budgeted gross profit report. Now, this is what happens in managerial. They make up these crazy reports. I mean, in financial, you got a balance sheet, you got an income statement, you got the- um, That's statement. so true. What? Yeah, the income sheet, balance statement, you right. know, all those. Those are all the different statements that go out to the, to the public. But in the world of managerial, they can make up whatever they want because all these reports stay within the company. They're a secret. So now, let's see. The revenues for the pistons enter all amounts in this report as formulas. So the price, what was the price of the pistons? Let's go back up here again. I think we got to go back to the, um, let me see. We the go price back. per unit? Yeah. $45. $45, good job. So $45, and we know the selling price is $45, and we know we had, I think, $5,000, $5,000. Okay. So here we go, down here. So we take equal plus $5,000 times $45, which is the, um, the selling price. Then we have the valves. Equal plus, we know we have... 12500 What's the selling price on that? Um, is it 17 Yep. Okay, good job. And then the cans, equal plus 1500 times, what's the selling price of the cans? 60 Yeah, they're expensive, right? So we have everything and we have no red asterisks, which is good. Then we have direct materials. Let's see. Cost per unit. Direct materials cost time the units. All right, so let's see. Direct, let's see, four. So we have 
equal 5,000 times 8. So let's see where we got the 8. Let's just go up here because everything we have is on the screen. Oh, direct materials per unit. I think yeah. that's what it means. Yeah, well, I'm just looking for the 8. I'm trying to see where we have the $8. Hmm. Five thousand times eight. Did they give us that in the chart in the in the problem? They tell us the cost is eight yep. dollars. Okay. What's the cost for the um for the uh, valves? Three he for direct materials. Is it is it three dollars? Yes. Okay, good. So this the information we're putting in is is given in the problem. And then we have uh, I think $40 is the cost of the cams times 1500 So there's all that. So the direct labor is $15. All these we're going to use now. So the pistons are going to be equal plus 5000 It's always that number of units, remember, times what we computed here. And then here, it's going to equal 12,500 times what, what we computed, computed. Here, 9. And here, it's going to be equal plus 1,500 times what we computed here. All right, so the factory overhead, that's going to be... Uh, Let's see, factory overhead, I believe, is 12. See, this is the factory overhead. We're going to use this part. Here, we use this. Here, we're using this. Factory overhead cost per unit. It says right here, factory overhead cost per unit. It spells it out. So we're going to do equal 5,000 times, what's the number up here? 1250. Yeah, exactly. And here, equal plus. How many units? It's up here. 12,500 times 750. Yep. And then finally, equal plus 1,500 units times five. five. How do I know? Because this is factory overhead cost per unit, and this is factory overhead cost per unit. Mm -hmm. Finally, that was the total cost. You have to so add it all add up. It. Yes, we got to add everything. We have to add uh, not the revenue, just the cost. So we do equal plus 40 plus 75,000 plus the factory overhead. And then we could copy and paste this, I think. Sometimes it lets you copy and paste the formula but sometimes it doesn't. This is not the same as Excel. It's a send gauge. And finally, gross profit. Does anybody remember how to compute gross profit? Anybody remember? I don't subtract the expenses. It's gross profit is the sales minus the cost of goods sold. But there are expenses, but they come after the gross profit, like there's administrative selling. So the gross profit is going to be this number, revenue, minus this, this number we just computed. So equal, you're right. You, whoever said it was expenses, yes. We take the revenue and you were correct. We subtract expenses. And then again, I'm going to copy and paste. Yeah, it's going to be the same number. So it says in here. Notice, notice the valves are showing a, a gross profit of negative. Oh, well, because that number is bigger than that one. Mm, exactly. So the gross profit percentage is basically, we're going to take, if the sales are 100%, then we're going to take the gross profit over the sales. So that equals plus. 47,500 divided by 225,000. So that's our gross profit percentage for the piston. Equal plus the revenue 
divided by that. Now I did it the wrong way. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Equal plus the, the gross profit divided by sales. The, the sales number, the larger number is in the denominator. But no harm done. If you get it wrong, you'll get the red asterisk and you'll just fix it. So equal plus divided by so there's our 15%. So these are all the gross profit percentage. So let's go up and see how we're doing as far as 100%. So let's see. They wanted they wanted to know. They wanted like a little blurb down here, which if you put it down there, I would have gave you extra points. And what they said in the book was that valves have the lowest and negative gross profit as a percentage of sales, right? Valves may require a higher price or lower cost to manufacture in order to achieve a higher profitability similar to the other two profits. So any questions, class? Any questions? We're going to do the next exercise in the next class. We'll save that for the next class. Any questions at all? No questions? It's such a quiet group. Um, okay, if you if you decide you think of a question after I close this meeting, then please email me with your question. I'll, I'll do the best to answer you. I'm glad you came tonight. I hope this helps you get through a Cengage template. Good night. Good night. Good night, all of you. Good night. Good night to you. Have a pleasant Good night. evening. Have a pleasant Good night. evening. Good night. Good night.